Pros, it finally happened. And no, not the haircut. That was a few weeks ago if you missed the stream. I got to the front. <laughs> I got to the stew to the front. Can't believe I'm doing it, committing to this. <laughs> I still can't believe you did it, dude. That's like, that's awesome. But for real, the ESP Home 2023 nine release and yeah i'm not gonna go do that cringy deal of reading change logs on a video y'all can all read i'm pretty sure and i believe um the libra tiny's been merged and what is all the libra tiny stuff that's the, all the crap we've been talking about with all the to your cloud cutter and then it was libra to ya, but then they changed the name because of some trolls or maybe copyright stuff i'm not gonna get into all of that but it's in ESP Home Stable, so no needing to do that fork thing or whatever. Just install your regular ESP Home add-on container, whatever it is, and dump everything all in one spot. How freaking cool is that? So don't click off yet. We're going to go through a few things. There are a few changes because I know everybody was probably using, you know, the dual dashboard stuff. So now, hey, how do we get it back into one? There are a few different YAML code changes. We'll go over those. It's nothing crazy. So stay tuned for that. And i um, not sure what else. This is just my typical off the cuff unscripted video. So whatever happens, happens. So I guess while we're here, um, there is one feature that I want to try out. Never would have thought that I would be putting WireGuard on ESP, or I'm not sure if it works on the Libra Tiny, you know, Beckon or the RTL chips, but that's pretty cool there. Um, I don't have any of these other sensors to go through and test, but back to here it is. And many back and forwards. Forward. Forward. Uh, maybe they should fix that. But I will go into that. Kuba 2K2. I know he's got a couple different names around. He's been putting in a tremendous amount of work to get Libra Tiny into ESP Home. He's actually been told no a couple times. And so kudos to him. I will leave the links down below. I've done some donations to him because of all the countless hours of work and everyone that has you know, made Libra Tiny into ESP Home a thing. If you don't really know what it is, just think about it that you can take a lot of the different smart life devices and light bulbs and plugs and you can right now do some cloud cutter things to them and over the air exploit and you can put ESP home on them, make them truly local and bring them into home assistant and not have to deal with the cloud, the, the to your cloud app or the to your cloud integration, which is crap. And yeah, it just, this works a little bit of you know work to get through it, but Hey, I'm here to help you get that done. You can check out some of the video guides or I even have a written guide for you on my website. And yeah, I just said it. I won't go through all of these damn changes. You can just read it along yourself. So before we jump into everything of migrating and moving your different dashboards, I'm going to say it. You see all the YAML files that you have. And if you have two dashboards, if they're split or the files are shared, whatever it is, copy this stuff in 10 damn different places. I've seen it way too many times where people have locked their cells out using the OTA passwords and they can't flash their devices or they lose the YAML file and they're like, hey, can I get it back? Is, is it in the device? No, it's not. You need your YAML device code. You're not going to be able to easily get it back. So if you have stuff already in your ESP home, please go back it up. Whatever means you use, you know what you are. You run either the add-on stuff, do your backup there. If you run your own container, copy that stuff out. Whatever it is, throw it in the cloud encrypted. Or if you really just want to go old school, you can just copy and paste these to a bunch of notepad files if that's the easiest way for you. But yeah, make sure you do back everything up. And I'm going to go over this again later in the video. Don't overwrite your OTA passwords. You won't get them back. So for the add-on users, 
I know in some cases that if you were using the Libra Tiny ESP Home, it would actually have a different set of YAML files. So when you went to here, it was a different set. You can see I don't have any. And I should go in the file editor. And you'll notice on this particular version, and I know it can be different because some people were also using the ESP Home beta copy where you know that they merge stuff in. I believe those are actually sharing, but you can see I do have an ESP Home folder here, and then I have a Libratuya ESP Home folder here as well. So you would need to move those YAML files over to your ESP Home folder, but just be careful, like use one of the file managers, and be careful not to overwrite an existing name and they will pop up in there. So future Digi here, and during editing, I wanted to kind of show this a little bit better since some may not exactly know. Of course, you can see here I have both the two GUIs, you got the Libra Tiny and then the regular ESP Home one. They have different file locations. Probably the easiest method, if you're using the Samba add-on or if you even do the Unraid users, you can just go to the folder where you have your device configs. Now ours is in config and you should see you got Libra Tuya ESP Home, maybe Libra Tiny, not sure the exact names. You can see there's the Wise Outdoor 2 and then here's the Libra Tuya, that's that best Libra Tiny device ever. So you can just copy that over and then just paste it into here. Now do make sure that if you had some secrets in the other config versus that one, don't overwrite your secrets file, that would be bad. But once you go back to the GUI, you should be able to see it now. There's that best Libra Tiny device ever. Now you probably have some secrets that's different between each. I would just open them up and just copy and paste things out that you need versus what devices and then put it into your regular ESP home secrets and go from there. But always a good idea. Make sure again, back up all these files. You never want to overwrite anything, especially if you have some unique keys in there because you really can't get them back without a serial flash. Now, if you're doing like the Docker container thing, like say on my little test system here, my Unraid box, I've got two ESP home containers and you know, one of them was e going to ESP home here and the other one was going to ESP home Libra Tiny. I will need to go use like, I, I know an Unraid, if you really want to, they have the MC. Just go open up a command prompt and go to Midnight Commander and you old school folks will definitely, you know, recognize this little dual file and you can go move stuff over if you want, don't want to do the command line thing. But if you want to, we can use whatever, just copy your stuff over and get it on over to whatever it may be into that same folder of ESP Home. And do need to make sure that you do update it. Let's go ahead and update this one. And because, and we'll update this other one as well. And that icon still trips me out. Sorry. Uh, so we're at 2023.9.1. And I'm not going to make a backup. I just told y'all to do it. But I'm, this is my test system. So yeah, do make sure and do your all your backups. The YAML files are small. Just copy them somewhere. Copy them in your own computer or whatever. So yeah, do make sure that you are using 2023.9.1. 0 but we're at 9.1 or better you know to be able to support all the little beckon chips and everything so what changes happen exactly in the yaml code i did talk a little bit about this on the previous video and it's not letting me zoom in gotta help out my mobile users if you have a device that has beckon stuff on it right now the old libra tiny or maybe the libra tuya um, if it has PWM, you will need to, which is pulse width modulation. That's going to be like for dimming and things of LEDs, like on bulbs and some like night lights. This one is that happens to be that night light. 
is you will get an error if you try to compile, but you need to just change them to Libra Tiny underscore PWM. I believe before they were just called LEDC, but then that kind of stepped on things with the whole ESP32, so they broke that out. Now, under here, we also used to have a block, depending on what version you came from, we had a block that said like Libra Tiny, that changed to BK72XX. Now, if you're ever curious and you don't, I don't even need this framework dev here. And the board is still the same. And if you're ever curious of what can I do to just copy and paste some stuff in, I wanna see what something else looks like. The UPK2 ESP Home website is a pretty cool website. It builds the ESP Home YAML configs straight out of the profiles pulled from the Tuya devices themselves. It's a pretty cool there. They're always changing and updating things, also making it, you know, add on to do the stuff for the Tuya MC, secondary Tuya MCU stuff. So, but I'm just going to pick, this sounds like a good one, this recessed RGB color temperature light. Always do take note of, you know, that there's two different chips. The, for the BK7231, there's the N and the T. There are a lot of stuff put in to prevent you from overriding that because they are different builds, but do make sure, you know, try not to write T to N or N to T or vice versa. Um, let's try not to test that feature out. There's that block there if you want to copy and paste it. And then this one also has that Libra Tiny PWM. You can use these as some excellent examples or really, if you find your device, just scroll down here. Like I want to do that motion night light that I was just talking about. It should have the yeah, Libra Tiny PWM already for us. And we can just copy and paste stuff out. Pretty cool that they have this build things automatically for you. How do I update my Beckon devices to you, whatever you want to call them? Do I have to go through all that to your cloud cutter stuff again once I put ESP home? No. Just press the button and hit wirelessly. As long as you have it on, plugged it in, which I just did, and let it eat. And it uploads right, flashes, does all the things, even though it is a Beckon chip. Don't treat it any differently. It's all in ESP Home now, one spot. And of course, I missed a feature that should be talked about. Many people that use the MQTT thing, um, <clears throat> not sure who that might be, but um, yeah, my chair just come undone. It looked like an idiot, but Libra Tiny now does support, you can enable MQTT for the Libra Tiny devices so you don't have to use them with Home Assistant if you don't want to. Node Red fans rejoice. That'll be about it for this one. I do appreciate Kuba, Jesse, and all the other ones, ESP Home people that made this a thing. And I'm going to say it again, don't overwrite your damn OTA passwords. It's bad. Yep, y'all have a good one. Y'all know the drill. Press all them buttons down there and y'all take care.